Hey, it's uh, Dan Morales. This is Home Buyer Radio, and I'm here once again with my good friend Rachel Gallagos with EXP Realty. All right, so like I uh, suckered Rachel into coming and doing some of these podcasts with me, uh, and she's been gracious enough to accommodate me. But you've you've come up with like these great ideas, right? Yeah. And so the the end of last week, we were talking about just how you know whether somebody bought their first house or their tenth house, because you probably see this like I have, where it's somebody who's who's let's say bought and sold houses multiple times and they think, oh, I don't need a realtor. I can sell my house without you. You know, I've been through this, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm, not so much, right? Yeah. You know, because one of the probably things that you're a student of is the market. Yeah. And we have to be right. I mean, I would not be a good agent <laughs> if I didn't know what was happening in the market and the market is going to change week to week, month to month year to year. It's never going to be, I mean, it's, it's for the most part, it's never going to be the same. It's, it's ever changing. Yep. You know, and I think people like to, they like to apply these like general rule of rule of thumb things to like real estate and or finance stuff. Oh, well, houses always do this or always do that. And what they miss is like real estate is like hyper local, totally. right? Yeah. Like one neighborhood may be popping off and doing really well, super desirable. And then one like right down the road, uh, yeah. maybe not as much, right? Yeah. Because and we even see trends, right? Like even COVID is a perfect example. You know, for so many years, the big thing was like building a beautiful new home in like the newest <laughs> subdivision that has the pool and the clubhouse. Right. And then all of a sudden COVID happened and everyone was like, oh, I want two acres in a barn. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> so it just, everything changed and it's, it's going to continue to, we're going to see trends and things that totally, you know, are going to change in real estate. Yep. And that's where like, you know, kind of going back to like, Hey, so if you, if you bought 10 houses just because three or four other times it worked this way or these things happened, you know, that's where you really need to have the guidance of somebody who's in the market full time. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't your part time gig. Yeah. This is what you do full time. You know, you are the real estate expert and you will always shoot straight with clients. But somebody who's in the market and can say, OK, you know, here's what's happening in the market right here, right now. And here's how it's going to impact you. Right. Right. Because, you know, I've, I've seen you have those conversations with clients and be very honest with them about, yes. OK, this is what the impact is to you. And you, you won't just blow sunshine to them. Like you'll mm -hmm. shoot straight with them. Right. And you know, and that's part of why I think why we work well together because we're both wired the same way. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear and tell you what you, you need to hear. Yeah. Right. Because it's important to me that, you know, if you're going to do this, that you understand how the pieces come together, what you're dealing with that, you know, we're shooting straight. You're not, you're not getting, you know, sold. Right. right. I, yes. I'm not trying to sell somebody. I'm trying to serve you. You know, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm trying to serve you. That's a tagline. Very good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> somebody else probably just stole that from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not trying to sell somebody, you know, but it's important like for somebody who's, who thinks like, Hey, I, I've bought and sold enough real estate. I don't need to have a realtor. You don't know what the trends are. You don't know what's going on in your market. You know, maybe maybe you you think a certain thing and you sold your house too cheap because you thought, oh, I'll save money because I'll cut the realtor out. And, and really what you did is you had limited exposure. You didn't have anybody to put the contract together correctly for you. Left yourself open to risk you didn't understand. Yep. You know, maybe sold your house to a buyer that wasn't even able to buy it. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That, that stuff where you really need an expert like you to walk them through. Well, and we kind of had a situation this year with one of our clients and she was actually the buyer but she was buying it for sale by owner and oh, yeah. <laughs> um, i mean this is a perfect example he was a for sale by owner who was priced too high and was on the market for a little while and every conversation i had with him he made it seem like he had offers he had offers he had offers but there was never you know deal was never it was never sold. nothing was ever put under contract yeah. it was never pending and so eventually my buyer said let's let's put an offer in we weren't significantly under list price but we weren't at list price either no and um he ended up contacting the, the buyer directly and convinced her essentially to cut me out of the deal but then also talked her up thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So she ended up, you know, doing I, it to herself. Now, thankfully, the last minute he pulled out. Yeah. You know, it it that he canceled the transaction, and a week later he put it on the market on the MLS with an agent for like. $20,000 more than she agreed to pay. <laughs> and he sat 
for over two months and then ended up canceling his listing. And that's, that house still has not sold. And so oh, that's a man. perfect example of, you know, here's this guy <laughs> who thinks his house is worth a certain amount of money, you know, convinces a buyer who's willing to pay him more than he even had it listed for and drop his agent because she wanted the house so bad. But then he didn't know what to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he had to cancel it. Yeah. The the ironic part is that that deal was probably the, the best he was ever going to get. Ever. And, and, and now. Even just, with even with an agent. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. the price that she offered with my representation. And to be honest with you, he probably would have gotten the most he would have gotten. And he would have had someone do his paperwork for yeah. him. And well, he, and it would have, it would have got across the finish line yeah. the right way. Yeah. But you know what? Y- y- you reap what you sow. Yeah. Right. Like, yep. you know, doing being like that and being greedy and, and, you know, and not knowing the market, not knowing the market, didn't know the market, didn't know, know how to do the paperwork. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Like, People think it's so easy and they can just put it on the market and they're going to Wait, I can't go just go get the contract at Staples. <sighs> uh, by the way, th- that no, you can't. You like, can't. <laughs> it, it's just the the stuff we'll see like, you know, we'll get a sheet of paper that says, "Hey, I'm going to buy John's house for 500,000 or you know, $200,000." Yeah. Cool. Who's going to pay this 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 this? You know, I'm like, I can't work off of this. Yeah. It's not acceptable. I had a client last year that um Bought, went under contract for a for sale by owner on a home that her, her and her husband just adored for years. I mean, it was they would drive by and be like, that's the home of our dreams. Yeah. <laughs> and it went up for sale for sale by owner. They ended up putting a deal together. They called me two weeks later because they wanted to sell their house, right? Yep. And so, you know, they had already started this transaction and, and they were actually a referral. So I didn't even know, I don't even know, didn't know who they were prior to this. Yep. Um, and so, you know, ended up getting their house sold and they went through their, you know, purchase. And but she had called me the day she got her closing disclosure from the title company, yeah. I think, for the her purchase and something to do with the taxes yeah, yeah. where she thought the tax or the the transfer taxes or something like that. She yeah. was just like, this was supposed to be split. Why am I paying this? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and it was because they had some typed up purchase agreement yep. that they concocted themselves. Yep. And I read through the purchase agreement. And I said, well, unfortunately, you're not really protected here. You know, it's too vague. There's not, yeah, there's yeah. no specifics, you know, like, but, but they thought they saved money or they, they thought it was yes. better, but you yeah. know, I'll see that like, or I'll see people that will be like, oh, well, we'll have our attorney draw it up. Okay, automatically <laughs> your your cost just went through the roof. They they always do. And then they start writing language in the contract that's non-standard. It is very unfavorable to one party or the other. And, and you end up paying stuff that you wouldn't normally end up paying. Like it just never ends up being good. Yeah. And it's like, no, you know, your agent is well versed in what are the norms for the market. Yeah. The the contract is is put together in a way that it protects everybody. It's fair, it's reasonable. Yeah. And it, it follows, you know, customary practices for the market area. And and then most importantly, like you oversee making sure the thing actually gets done. Yes. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to do. It's kind of the quarterback of the team that's yeah. just over, overwatching everything to make sure, okay, everybody signed. You know, these inspections got done and needed to get done. Yeah. You know, the lenders are doing their part. You know, all those pieces are coming together and people think it's just simple or or they think like, oh, well, you know, I did this for sale by owner. It's somebody else's job to make sure it gets done. No, it, when you did it by yourself, it became your job. It's your job, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and if you don't know what you're doing, like, you know, it's like doing surgery on yourself, man. Like, you shouldn't do it. Well, and I think it's it's good for, like, just the general population to know whether you're a buyer or a seller. If you are a seller selling your home for sale by owner, you have one of two options. Work with a buyer's agent, which if you're going to do it for sale by owner, definitely work with a buyer's agent. Or say no buyer's agents. Well, now you've just eliminated your buyer pool by about 80% yeah. because buyers aren't just <laughs> running around yeah. looking at houses without agents unless they're only going to open houses because it's literally the only way to look at a house for sale. Yeah. Um, but if you're choosing to work with an agent, a buyer's agent, they're going to play you. 
Like you, this is their job. You, well, yeah, they do you're... this for a living. <laughs> they are going to get their buyer the best deal possible, yeah. and you are going to lose money. Well, and that, and that's their that's their fiduciary responsibility, right? Absolutely. They, you know, and and that, that leads to a good point. Like for for those of you who are out there looking to buy the importance of having a buyer's agent, right? Yeah. Because people almost say, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want a buyer's agent. It's like, no. Like, yeah. when you have the buyer's agent, like, it is your responsibility to protect that buyer. Absolutely. And to look out for him. And, and I, I, I could never for the life of me understand why people would be apprehensive to to having a buyer's agency agreement. I don't understand it either. I don't I don't understand it. Um, you know, the, the seller and the listing agent the the commissions is contracted between them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yep. you're not part of that contract. Correct. <laughs> your deal with your buyer's agent is has nothing to do with you know, and yeah. so it's like yeah, yeah. You don't gotta pay any money up front to have an agent. Like they're there to work for no, you. No, no. And and it's you know, it's all it's all part of what you do to protect their interest and, and to negotiate on their behalf. Yeah. And to make sure that you've put them in the best position they can be. And you know, I it, it would always amaze me that people are like, oh, I don't want to sign anything. I don't want to be committed to anybody or anything. It's like so you want your agents to do all these things for you. Yeah. You want them to protect you, look out for you, and you know, and, and really do their job. But you, you, you can't commit to to doing that. And it's like, you know, and, and I guess without that, you know, are, are you really working no. for the buyer? Or are you working that's for the, the seller? Whole, right? No, that's the thing. Is I don't think the the general population understands if you don't have a signed buyer's agency agreement with an agent that you're looking at houses with. Technically, they owe you nothing. Yeah. They don't. You, you you kind of really almost more in yeah. line with the seller at that point. Absolutely. Wouldn't you be, you're, right? you're, it, technically, in legal terms, you're a sub agent of the seller. Okay. If you're if you if there's no contract and the the buyer hasn't agreed to work with you exclusively. Okay. You're technically a sub agent of the seller at that right. point. And, and so does it? And, and you know, it, so you couldn't you couldn't necessarily be like, hey, I know they would have took fifty thousand less. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, because, because you're really, you're, if you're working as a sub agent of the seller, exactly, you're, yes. you're, you're really, you're more aligned with the seller's best interest more than yeah. what you would be, let's say the well, buyer's. And I, I just think that it's like, yes and no. Right. Because a lot of, we don't have a lot of that information also as agents, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's really just a matter of if a buyer is not going to agree to work with me exclusively and say, I trust you to do what's in my best interest. I'm just not going to work with you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, because you, you, you'd you put a bunch of time and energy absolutely. into that. Absolutely. And, and My it's like, time okay, is important too. Well, yeah. Well, you, but you, you see, here's the thing though, is you do your job right though. Right. Like, so when somebody looks at a property, you'll go through and research to make sure, okay, this seems reasonable to, yep. to what the market's shown or gosh, you know, the, you know, these other comps would maybe warrant a better price or yes. you, you, you know, and you have enough connections with the other agents in the market. And here's the thing, like, and I think this is something that's overlooked a lot too, is that people don't recognize like the good agents all know each other. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, you, you, it's, you know, in some cases you'll be like, you know what? I feel better working with this person because 100%. we've done a hundred transactions with them. And even if the offer was a little bit lower, you know, let's say for, you know, a seller or, you know, more favorable, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, because, you know, all the good players, we all know who each other are. Absolutely. Right? You know, I run into that where I've had, you know, agents tell me like, hey, we, we, we accepted, you know, this offer because we knew you were the lender. Yes. We, we trust you. Absolutely. Right? And, and that kind of stuff happens with, with agents too. Like, yep. hey, you know, you and I have gotten deals done because people know you, they know me. Yep. And they know what the deal is going to get done and they trust that. Right. Yeah. And so they, they, it's like there's a level of sure there that they know it's going to happen where if oh i got this pre-approval letter from abc mortgage and it's some agent nobody's ever heard of you know the good agents would be like yeah i'm not gonna roll the dice man. yes you if know. there's multiple offers right yeah, yeah um but yeah i 100 agree and it goes the other way around if if it's an agent who's submitting an offer to me that i've done multiple transactions with and they don't pull their weight and they don't communicate and they don't you know they don't aren't super honest I'm going to know that. I'm going to oh, oh, I'm yeah, going to advise yeah, my client. <laughs> Cuz there's is, a lot of those. <laughs> absolutely, because my 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 job is to do what is in my client's best interest. Absolutely. And I'm going to advise them all the information that I have that's going to affect what's best for them. Uh, absolutely, cuz you're always you're always looking out for their best interest and yes. in, in doing the right thing. 
And that's always been, you know, I think the cornerstone of why we've partnered well together because we're wired the same way. Yeah. You always do what's right for the client. At the end of the day, you know, even if they don't like it, you're always going to give them honest answers. For sure. And that's the stuff that, you know, because then the client can make a good informed decision and they know what to expect as opposed to feeling like they got sold something yes. or, or pressured into something like, you know, neither of us are high pressure salespeople. No. We're just going to shoot straight with it. Like, look, here's what it is. You know, we want you to like it. We want you, you know, ultimately in the end, like I want you to feel happy about whatever yes. we've done for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we want you to refer people back yeah, to us. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and we want to be able to, you know, serve those people as well too with, with the same care that we, we give any other client, you know, yes. as part of what we do as well too. So cool. How do people get in touch with you? So they can call me at 616-566-2401 or email me at Realtor at gmail.com. And my last name is spelled G-A-L-L-E-G-O-S. And I'm Dan Morales with The Dart Bank. My NMLS number is 709-729. The Dart Bank, of course, is Equal Housing Lender. You can reach me at 616-931-4629 or online at danmorales.com. That's M-O-R-A-L-E-Z.com. Have a great day.